So some of you know we've teamed up with Picks, and that is PicksShop.com. There's an app, and we are working on the app with them. The coolest thing about it is we get to have meetings and go through design stuff and see how we can fix the UI, UX. But there is so much technology behind this app, and like I can't even get it to you in a minute of everything that's going on. But if you do tastings, you could do tastings, you could do posts and just say like, hey, I'm drinking this tonight. But if you do tastings, the app is going to start matching you to bourbons that you are going to like. You're going to find emails that come through that say, hey, you liked this one a lot. You might like these two. As you're searching through, you're going to see the percentage of like how well you match to the other people that are tasting and the other drinks that they are tasting as well. So this thing is so cool. It gives you recommendations. You can see how your friends rated things. It's just a fun way to interact and drink whiskey together, even though we are all virtual sometimes. You know, you could do it with the people in your neighborhood. You could do it with people across the country. Picks is so much fun. And go to PicksShop.com, download the app. It's only for Apple right now, but we are going to get it for Android eventually. Go to PickShop.com, download the app today. Have fun plans for the outdoors? Make the memories last with the best outdoor coolers and drinkware. Celebrating 10 years of cool, Orca was founded in 2012, born from the idea of making a hard-sided cooler that beat out all the rest. Orca coolers are built to be as strong as the adventures you take them on. That's why they have a lifetime warranty while giving you world-class maximum temperature retention. Orca's drinkware offers the same high quality, keeping your drinks icy cold or hot for hours, and they look great while doing it. Their stainless steel vacuum-sealed tumblers and martini cup are perfect companions for your next outdoor adventure. Go to orcacoolers.com backslash bourbon for 15% off your order. That's orcacoolers.com backslash bourbon for 15% off. Orca, make it last. All right, so this is a continuation of the previous episode, and I want to know... Let's just get this out in the cold open. Why the hell did you fly to Rochester to go to Taconic? Well, first and foremost, you, you and I both know I'm not the most geographically inclined, <laughs> but our good friend uh, Jeff Marsh is in Rochester. And so when he and I conceived this whole notion, hey, I need to go to D.C. and to see Prov. He wants DDB to have a, the first pick of Dream Spirits. Wonderful. He wanted to do a collab with us as well. And I'm like, I want to do both at once. John's super busy with kids, weekend, soccer, et cetera. I'm, I guess, not fortunate enough, but I have every other weekend free to a degree. <laughs> I can manage some things. Here's when I can come up. So I just empirically plan my flight there. That's how I end up in Rochester. I then later think, especially knowing the kind of person he is, that he's effing with me. Because I'm like, hey, man, by the way, like, how far is this car ride? Four hours and 26 minutes is how long the car ride is. And to be perfectly candid with you and everyone else, I had no idea the state of New York was that big. I did not. I mean, to be fair, you don't know a lot of anything that is above the Mason-Dixon line. For a reason. Don't ever plan to be there too much. I know I'm cutting you off, but like this just befuddles me so much. You could have flown to Albany and he could have picked you up on the way because the way that he would have to go, he would have to go through Albany. And Did you then, realize that's the capital? It is. Yeah. Man, I didn't know that either. And Albany is the capital of New York. You would have had an hour and six minute drive from Albany to Taconic. But I would have had to pay for a hotel one or both nights. Let's just be honest. I did good to plan this whole trip as it was on my own, including train rides, multiple flights, etc. I'm just happy I made it there in one piece and back. Nine hours in the car with Jeff March. Congratulations. So that's, so that's the best part of this whole story. And I don't think you've seen this. Well, apparently Marsh really loves EDM and like trance music. It keeps him awake. Apparently it does the opposite for old Zeke. I'm talking about I was dead to the world. The majority of the ride up there. Then we start coming back. I'm out again. And he's messaging Wes and Carlos, some of the guys in the group chat. Like, can you believe this shit? Zeke is going to sleep both ways this whole car ride and just leave me here stranded solo. Wes replies, put on Kid Rock. See what happens. Woo! Where's the bottle left from with the distillery? It's about time to get things going. Let's go. Like I immediately pop up.
Hello, hello, everyone. My name is John Edwards. With me, as always, is Zeke Baker, and together we make the Dad Shrink of Bourbon. Wherever you are, whatever time it is, thank you for making us part of your day. Zeke and I have been known, like, there is some EDM music that can get you going. So Zeke and I have been known to listen to Girl Talk as we're driving up to Kentucky late night, and it keeps us up. Like, that stuff is okay. It's a specific type of EDM I think you could do. If the bass is too much, like, maybe it it lulls you and kind of, like, hums you to sleep. Literally, it was more trance music, and that was my joke. Like, I know what I call it, like, house or trance music. Put my ass in a sleeping trance. Four hours. I couldn't even hold my head up. It's so funny that, like, Marsh dressed like he was going to, like, play in the PGA for the pick, and then he's, like, bumping trance music on the way home. (laughs) He bumped both ways he's like dude it's what i play during my car rides it keeps me going i mean i guess i get it simply because i've had friends too they're like oh you know when i'm driving long distances i just play books on tape and, and that's what keeps me like wired and awake i'm like listening to james earl jones for seven hours ain't gonna keep me awake for 10 minutes i don't know how this works out like no no how no way i mean i'm not one to talk i've been listening to the new taylor swift album for a week straight so like i shouldn't talk here but i mean i know i just kind of like scratched the record on you but it's a freaking good album you should check it out i'll take your word for it i have no problem saying that great album i i, I don't mind listening to her stuff I, i'm i'm just i'm good right now my music okay four and a half hours later you get to to conic you're rested you're refreshed you just had a nap and then what'd you pick when you got there so we get there and um what is by the way i'm leaving this in but like what is your throat clearing thing it's been sinus and allergies i've I've still got it i don't know why we can't like be cold or or whatever is going on here but ragweed has been blooming for weeks me and both of my parents and my sister are all doing the same shit for lack of a better word oh i'm pollen and ragweed too but i'm not like going well i think it's because i was away from it for three days oh like literally sinuses were great the whole weekend out of here other than i do know why they call that whole area the cat skills because that's all you see is cat skills over and over and over and over yeah we make it out to Deconic, and you know Paul and his wife are there. Their staff, super great to finally meet them. Like I told Jeff, like you know earlier when we talked about this pick, like we met them twice here, did a show with them. They've always taken care of us. You know, sent us any products they had. Just super nice, wonderful people, and and also that I love the double maple more than most things that are out there. Like if I'm gonna go pick something and and go to New York, that's where we're going, and that's what we're doing. Although I do have to say they only send it to you and then you never share with me. Like they just sent you their newest one and like we could have done a show on it, but I think you already drank it. No, no, I, I have their malt and there's something a uh, wheat is coming and we will do both very soon. I make a point not to drink those all the way down so that we can do a show. Only the double maples is what gets wiped out. All right. We could do a show around them. That's good. <laughs> it's not often you get a sample that I don't that we could do a show around. So. So we go and, you know, pull some barrels and literally the first one that comes out, like super floral, great profile. Like, all right, is this just because we've been in the car for four and a half hours and this is the first sip of the day? Like, or is this really like, man, the homeboy just hit the first barrel. Like, man, there's a ringer. Uh, So we end up tapping four more barrels, all distilled the same day, barreled the same day, all in the same ISC barrels, the same chars. I mean, like variable wise, there's just nothing there. And then even working our way back through all of them, that first one just stood out like no other. And you know, it's kind of those like back to basics, simplicity moments of, well, they always tell you the barrel pulls the most weight. All of these were distilled the same day. Put in barrels the same day. All the barrels were bought at the same time. Same cooperage, same char. But this one, I mean, it's leaps and bounds above anything else we tried. Like, it was just really damn good. All right. Here we go. Simple enough. Cool. And then, of course, we did the double maple pick, which it was splitting hairs over which one might have been creamier versus more crushable. And (laughs) I'm still not sure if Marsh won't go back and take both of them. (laughs) I mean, those things are so good. I don't know why more people aren't picking them or buying them or whatever. Oh, those are great. And I love that I just add, like, you did a whole story and you left it. Like, it was just your ending. I couldn't help but just going, cool. But... (laughs) 
it is a great barrel. It sounds like it's going to be a great barrel. And I do find it interesting, right? And it goes back to everything Dan Gardner talked to us about years ago, where you don't know like the barrel itself. Is it going to be tight staves or open staves? And what's going to go on with all that stuff? Like you just don't know. It could be the same cooperage and the wood they grab just happened to be a little bit different. So all that stuff I find super interesting. Having a double maple, you know, you can't go wrong. There's nothing you're going to really go wrong with on that. So no, it's even funnier too. Like looking at how popular the honey and the maple stuff is now, pretty sure they were the first to do maple. They were ahead of anybody. Almost with that whole either again, like honey or maple, you know, rebarreling, double barreling, whatever you want to call it process, like no credit, but uh, they were, they were in front. They definitely were. And I think they were in front with a lot of stuff, right? Like there's, you know, the stuff they did with the Mizu casks was way before other people started doing stuff with Mizu casks. And then I just think that they're on top of stuff. I mean, I still want that ice cider. They did an ice cider finished and I would love that one again, but I don't even think they remember doing it because they've been ahead of so many things, you know? That was brought up when we first talked about doing a collab. And I said, this is something I would love to do. Like they did it years ago. I drank the whole bottle. Like it was great. And, And Jeff brought it up. There's not any ice cider cask available at this current time but should any become available they know where to find us absolutely paul come find us paul brandon you know all the folks over there they'll be here in february we're we're working on something perfect i'm glad you had a good trip zeke i'm glad you were able to go represent for us i appreciate you now we are drinking union trail bourbon this is something that james from the bourbon enthusiast did along with mash and grape so you can actually go on a mash and grape and that's where you can buy this you you can also go to Union Trail Bourbon.com and it'll give you the links to go buy it from there as well. So something they did with Mash and Grape that was pretty cool. It is MGP bourbon, minimum six years, three months, 75% corn, 21% rye, 4% malted barley, 118.6 proof, 59.3% ABV. The bottle yield on this was 930 bottles on this run and it is $79.99. Any questions, Zeke, before we start talking about what we thought of it? This was all the 21% rye mash? Yes, sir. Hmm, okay. I know. I was surprised at that as well. I'm honestly kind of thrown by the the mash bill. I, I thought it was somewhat either a wheated product or maybe even a little more barley forward. Didn't get hardly any corn at all on the front intake. I, I just felt like there was kind of like the uh, like maltish barley approach and then kind of the blandness of a wheater that it wasn't young but it wasn't ripe i guess you know that kind of gives you the, the the transparent barrel flavors that haven't soaked all the way in but they're pretty damn close you know yeah i thought that moved into a spice that kicked up pretty well it got pretty creamy the spice seemed to fall off by the finish and overall i thought it was pretty well rounded i agree with you on that i mean i think for me what kind of threw me was the spice you know i got a lot of spice on this for the 21 percent mash bill the other thing i'd say that i just got a lot of maple and chocolate like this was a great pour that really coated your mouth well i think it was a well-balanced pour well crap i lifted legs today and i'm just getting a huge cramp like my whole muscle in my leg just completely yeah, I con- thought by the way you raised up you're like i just shit my pants no my whole like, muscle oh, crap, i gotta go <laughs> my whole muscle in my leg just completely contracted hard like hard and i was like oh oh need a second there but the mouth feel was great like they blended this they did a great job blending it i think the complexity that's there i mean i i also love that it's not like a four-year mgp that they just went and put out it is a six year three month at least it just it's good it's good james really did well on this i i hate giving like this short review after everything and just being like yeah it's good go ahead and like go get it but um not i mean six years it's going to be the perfect amount of oak that's on there i just got i did get a little bit of the barrel i got a little bit of the oak i I just got a lot of chocolate and maple like great it's an easy sipper it does not drink like 118 proof i'll tell you that the only thing that i would say it's missing is probably some corn sweetness on the front but at the same time i i would definitely qualify that with look at how many places are sourcing these days how many folks are putting out juice that's not ripe by any means and you either only get corn on the front 
and or when you get that corn, it's not aged or matured enough to be the profile you want. So the fact this maybe isn't quite here too much, I'm pretty good with. And I think other than that, you and I both hate this statement and try to refrain from it most days. But other than some sweet corn in the front, this checks all the boxes. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with you on saying a lot of that stuff but no this is really really good and batch two so this was batch three the barrel proof bourbon that we had batch two was a 15 years founders batch and that was 84 8 and 8 distilled in tennessee and then the first one was just four barrels and it was only to the members of the bourbon enthusiast club and that was a uh, 75% corn, 21% rye, and 4% malted barley. No, I would say well done, um, especially for a yield that size and all those different barrels. Like, kudos. Absolutely. James, good job. Thank you for sending us this whiskey. Go to uniontrailbourbon.com to find it. Folks can find us on Facebook at Dad's Drinking Bourbon, Twitter at Bourbon Dads, Instagram at Dad's Drinking Bourbon. You can find Zeke in the car listening to some trance music while he's sleeping while Jeff's driving. Zeke, where else can the folks find us? <laughs> Good old Music City, USA. Cheers. Ciao.